I'm at the wheel of Cat's new uh, CT610. The CT610 rounds out the wider end of the Cat range. I'm actually on the way back to Melbourne from Brisbane. So over the last day or so, I've actually uh, come down the New England Highway, went up Cunningham's Gap, uh, down the New England Highway to Tamworth, and I'm uh, currently on the way through Gilgandra, heading back to Melbourne. It's been a very challenging route, uh, uh, actually a very good route for testing a truck on. CT610 doesn't look actually that much different than its predecessor. But the big news is the new CT13 engine underneath. This is the first engine with a CAT badge that has its heritage outside of Caterpillar. The basis of the engine, or the block, actually comes from MAN in Europe. That technology has been adopted by Navistar in the United States. It's come here and uh, it's now a new CAT engine. It uh, puts out about 475 horsepower and about 1650 foot pound of torque so pretty much ideal for uh, single trailer operations and all those sort of things. This is also the first EGR engine with a cat badge on it uh, or on highway anyway. Uh, EGR is uh, exhaust gas recirculation. Most people are familiar with it because um, to satisfy current emissions laws you pretty much at the moment have a choice between SCR or EGR. There's a uh, diesel particulate filter under the cab and it has active regeneration. So when that filter gets clogged up, a little afterburner ignites, burns out all the soot. This engine is almost schizophrenic in its performance. The European heritage should not actually stand out at all. It's been through a couple of manufacturers before it's ended up here. It has a very flat torque curve, which is very much like a European engine. Pretty much from standstill, this, e this engine will give you peak torque all the way up to about 1500 RPM. Shuffling through bottom, uh, the bottom half of the gearbox and it just chugs along nicely. However, once you're in the top end of the gearbox, that's when the revy personality of the new engine really comes out. This engine really has a sweet spot at about 1700 RPM. And I noticed that yesterday, going up Cunningham's Gap, coming down the Moonbees, um, it, it really, really likes to rev. It's actually quite a nice little uh, engine to drive. Another thing that's interesting about this engine is it has a compacted graphite iron block, CGI for sure. The thing with the, uh, with the CGI block is that it doesn't have the resonance of a cast block and it makes it really, really quiet. In fact, I would compare the engine noise levels of this engine to uh, a gas-powered engine, um, LNG or CNG-powered engines. They're renowned for being quiet and this thing, dare I say it, purrs. The CT610 is also available with an Eaton Ultra Shift Plus transmission. So that's a two pedal AMT. I'm driving the extended cab manual version. Yesterday I actually took the uh, AMT equipped day cab version for a drive as well. And it was a very interesting comparison. My preference lies with the traditional gear stick. I think that uh, it seems to suit the dual personality of this engine a lot better. The, the Ultra Shift equipped truck felt a bit lackluster. That being said, Eaton can do a lot with software upgrades. This is a new truck. I'm sure that uh, there's a, some software mapping available that will actually really get, get it up and going. Out of the box, these trucks are equipped with a 3.9 diff ratio, like final drive ratio. And that means that uh, at 100 kilometers an hour, you're doing under 1500 RPM, which is great for open road fuel economy. That does, however, mean that you've got to change your approach to driving a little bit uh, out on the open highway, because basically, as soon as you see a hill, you've got to knock this uh, overdrive button back into direct to really make the most of that 16 to 1700 RPM sweet spot. As far as fuel economy goes, Cat are really quoting some impressive uh, gains in fuel efficiency over the outgoing C13 engine, which was the entirely Cat predecessor, talking about 10 or 11 percent better fuel economy, which in this day and age has got to make a difference. From an engine braking point of view, this is a real character change for a Caterpillar. This engine really has its peak braking efficiency or engine braking efficiency at about 18, 1900 RPM. You can even let it run out to 2100 RPM uh, under engine braking. The downside of that is that out on the open road like I am now on the Newell Highway with the undulations, at 1500 RPM you're not really getting 
maximum braking effect. If you want to actually back bleed off speed, there is some braking effect, um, but you probably need to knock it out of overdrive just to give it that little bit of a bit more oomph. One thing that EGR engines are renowned for is actually high running temperatures. This engine, however, I've only had the engine fan on on some really, really steep grades when it's working really, really hard. Out on the open road, you don't hear a peep from this engine fan. I mean, we're in a bit of a late autumn hot spell at the moment. I haven't heard the engine fan all day. Well, at the moment, we're looking at about 90 degrees Celsius, which is uh, not too bad. The cab differs little from the CT630 in terms of superstructure. It has a different bonnet shroud, a clearly different radiator and all those sort of things. One of the interesting things is there's actually still quite a lot of real estate in the chassis. This truck only has a couple of tanks on it. This would deal with a quad tank setup quite easily for anyone wanting to hit the open road. From a visibility point of view, it's fantastic. There is a piece of glass virtually in every direction you want to be looking in. But out on the open road, or if you get held up, you've got a bed. As this sets now, I mean, this has got car carrier written all over it, actually. So it's a, it's a quite a neat little package, aerodynamics, um, visibility. This is a truck that you'll quite happily punt around town all day and take it up the highway if you needed to. The 3.9 three, three gears at the, um, on the final drive, do take a little bit of getting used to but you do slot in very quickly as soon as the road starts to go up you drop out of overdrive. Uh, from a drivability point of view uh, I've actually quite enjoyed it. I think it's a nice combination of low down torque, nice peaky drivability and uh, an all round pleasant truck to spend a few hours in. Well with the sun setting it's time for the big trucks to come out and play.